This is Nancy Newhart with Allegheny Highlands Arts and Crafts Center. I'm the curator and I'm here with the artist of the newest exhibit called All You Need Is Love. The artist with me is Rod Hemming who lives in Buchanan, Virginia. But you'll notice that he has a slightly different non-Virginia accent. He's originally from Worcester, sure, England. So Rod, tell me a little bit about, I know you have several styles of painting in this exhibit and so if you'll tell us a little bit about where you started and how they evolved. I know you started with the photographs. That's right. And then you moved to the watercolors and we have a watercolor over here behind you and you worked with the watercolors and they still weren't doing it for you. That's right. Um, the, the whole setup really was that I was a, a, a trained as a designer in textiles um, and as a designer, we began with watercolors and drawing with pencils. Later, of course, it became computerized, so we got onto computers. But coming back into just painting and creating on board or canvas, uh, I initially started back in with watercolors. And because of the paper, the paper of pen and ink uh, style of uh, work that I was doing, um, I decided that I wanted to try and develop and move on into something in the way I had done with the textiles. It never stayed as one thing continuously. It was always evolved. And that's how the whole process of what you'll see in the exhibit became an exhibit. Um, the starting point then was the paper, pen and ink, and pencil work. And that's much more traditional. And then moving on, I actually moved into a new style of using those mediums, and that became the fish group. Now, the fishes are all pen and ink and uh, watercolor, but I also developed uh, a, a way of creating a background that was more to do with nature. And the process then it, it evolved again because the thought started to. Uh, uh, develop that the whole fish thing became in my mind uh, to do with how we are needing to protect the nature of what's in our oceans you know we were seeing images of balloons and things like that all sorts of things floating in the water in the seas and it just started to become an evolution of thought now, Having run through that evolution, the process then changed again. Okay, so the, the fishes in the oceans turned to a different, still on a paper surface um, or on a canvas, but with watercolor still. That's right. So these are the next batch. This is the next development, yes. And it was really a matter of, because there had become so much uh, development of abstraction in the fishes, the, the natural development on was to use nature again, but this time, because we'd been traveling, my wife and I had been traveling, and uh, I, I thought that the landscape would be a, a much more interesting development, uh, way of developing. And so, because we had been on highways, in trains, uh, or we'd also flown a couple of times, I liked the idea of using motion and how to try and develop the feeling of movement and motion. And so that's how this whole small group developed. And the, uh, the idea was that although the abstract movement of the background is to do with landscape and water, we exist in that and I'm representing us in various forms of transport, if you like, or us as people in those solid forms and how we integrate into what is nature. Now, after working with the watercolors, you decided to move on to a medium that was new for you, and that was oils. And so the most recent pieces in the show are oils, and they have all been done since last fall. Exactly, yes. Uh, even, the, uh, even the drawings uh, started, although the drawings did start for the ideas, uh, last fall. Um, most of the paintings have actually been carried out 
this this year. Um, um, and what happened was that uh, because I'd been using acrylic colors for many, many years, since they came out um, pretty well, but I just wasn't getting what I wanted to have the effects and the outcomes with these new images. So we decided, my wife and I decided, we should try oils, um, something I'd always fought against, to be honest. Uh, so it was definitely down to her pushing. But it's Stop writing, stop writing, they're wonderful. <laughs> um, it, the, the, the whole e evolution of, of the oils then became a totally new genre of, of how to work with, with imagery. Um, and you can see that, for instance, in this particular piece, um, it allows me to actually create beyond what watercolors or acrylics ever would let me create. Textures that I've always wanted to put into paintings. And so I just went um, and overdeveloped and overdeveloped one color on top of another, on top of another, until I was happy with the build-up and then creating all of these textures in different areas, whether they're subtle or very prominent in a piece, the whole thing became a very, very different way of producing the art. And now I'm hooked. I think it's really neat on Father's Day weekend, which is when we're taping this, is the, the latest works you told me early on were based on Morris code, the dots and dashes of the Morris code, <laughs> and that that is connected to the time that you spent with your dad yeah. and him teaching you Morris code. So this is the perfect piece for you to sort of take off from there. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes sense. Um, because of all the, all the work that I was now able to do in oils, I just came back one day to the thought that it would be interesting to put words into a painting because it's almost like I could write. But then I thought, no, writing, a lot of people are doing writing. And my father, when I was very young, because of him, him being, um, uh, he was an engineer on a ship um, during the Second World War. And uh, as I was growing up after that time, um, he taught me how Morse code worked and what it was all about. So I actually started to develop some ideas See, how to use Morse code. So I now have a way of adding messages in the pieces, but by using Morse code, it become, it's still becoming part of not just the texture of the painting, but also the patterning of the texture. And I think you'll see in this exhibit, and in fact, we've named the exhibit, All You Need Is Love, because one of the larger pieces, this kind of size piece, is actually, um, all about all you need is love and um, if you look at the the sheet I believe that we're going to be producing for the, the show um, you'll be able to sit and uh, work out a little Morse code on a couple of the pieces here it's a, it's a newer part of what I'm doing but there will be a lot more of these coming along because it's such a an interesting way of giving a message to someone but still having it as part of the art rather than just obvious words.